Yo, it's Dr. Cool. Welcome back, self-powered heads. With everyone anticipating the self-powered car trip from Zimbabwe to Cairo, most especially the abusive and destructive skeptics Westerners, the $1 million question remains, what's the current stage of the self-powered car trip to Cairo? What's the challenges? Will it still hold? What's the date for the road trip? Which media will do the, the coverage? Or which YouTube channel will the streaming be viewed from? In other words, was the trip cancelled or postponed temporarily or indefinitely? Well, here is what you need to know for sure. Yo, listen up, because this is groundbreaking invention is so huge and gigantic than any invention ever made by mankind due to its disruptive capabilities. Reality is, the inventor Sangalani Maxwell Chikumbutsu has been through a lot to get the self-powered tech to make it to 2025 down to partnering with different Chinese big players in the game and staking a lot to bring out different working prototypes. To attract investors after rejecting multi-million dollar offer from US previously, a story for another day coming us soon. Before we dice into this rabbit hole, I want you to take a good look at the current situation over the internet and mainstream media. It's currently going up in flames with Elon Musk at the mercy of the oil industry, hidden under the disguise of the customers organizing protest that is facing Elon Musk and his Tesla toys to take them down. This stage propaganda isn't just facade, but a typical what is coming about the self-powered car, a rage demonstrated against pioneer of leadership in EV due to massive adoption of the EV to reduce reliance on fossil fuel. Now picture how big the self-powered technology is and how really disruptive it is. If you are the CEO of self-powered car and you are to build a home before it rains or fly a drone for public stunt before it rains, which will you do first? That's like, now let's get into the nitty gritty of trip to Cairo, shall we? Yeah, we've all dreamed of it. A car that doesn't guzzle petrol like it's going out of fashion. A car that tells those greedy oil barons to shove it. Well, Maxwell Chikumbutso, a Zimbabwean inventor, might just have done it. This genius have built a technology that makes a car that runs on air. He called it radio frequencies. This shocked the mainstream science base due to the fact that he's not a scientist, not Harvard or MIT students or graduates, not even a guy who graduated from any Western college, no degree, no bachelor of science, PhD, DHD, no nothing. Yet his microsonic energy captures radio frequencies that Western established scientist and engineer latest cutting edge tools couldn't detect. However, the two US citizens Foster Gamble's documentary and Niels Rognerud verified this technology to work as claimed in 2015. However, they were unable to figure out the energy source Maxwell Chakumbutso microsonic energy device is harvested that keeps batteries constantly charged, not compressed air, not some hydrogen fuel cell nonsense, just air, plain and simple. Now I know what you're thinking. Sounds like a load of bollocks, doesn't it? And you wouldn't be the first. But stick with me here. Chikumbutso was all set for a grand demonstration, a road trip from Zimbabwe to Cairo in a car that laughs in the face of fuel stations. This wasn't just about showing off a fancy motor, it was about revolutionizing the way we think about energy, about transportation, about the bloody lot. The world was watching, waiting with bated breath to see if this was the real deal or just another pie-in-the-sky idea. Could this be the breakthrough we've all been waiting for? The one that finally kicks our addiction to fossil fuels to the curb? Buckle up, because if Chikumbutso's invention is for real, we're in for one hell of a ride. Now, driving from Zimbabwe to Cairo isn't for the faint of heart. It's a bloody long way, thousands of miles across some of the most challenging terrain on the planet. But that was exactly the point. Chikumbutso wanted to prove that his car was up for the challenge, that it could handle anything Africa could throw at it. This wasn't just a publicity stunt, though it certainly would have been a brilliant one. It was about showcasing the potential of his invention on a global stage. Imagine the impact of a car that could conquer the Sahara without a single drop of petrol. This trip, if successful, would have sent shockwaves through the automotive and energy industries. Governments around the world would be scrambling to get their hands on this technology. And who could blame them? The thought of a future free from the shackles of oil dependence is a tantalizing prospect, to say the least. Let's be honest, 
The big players in the energy game, the oil giants and their cronies, wouldn't be thrilled about a car that runs on thin air. They've built empires on black gold, and the last thing they want is some upstart inventor messing with their bottom line. History is littered with examples of disruptive technologies getting squashed by those who stand to lose the most. Remember the electric car's sudden disappearance in the early 20th century? Coincidence? I think not. Chikumbutso's invention posed a direct threat to the established order, and you can bet your bottom dollar that there were some powerful forces working behind the scenes to discredit him, to bury his invention before it could even get out of the garage. Now Zimbabwe itself is no stranger to political and economic turmoil. The government, understandably, saw the potential in Chikumbutso's invention, a chance to put the country on the map for something other than its problems. But they also had to tread carefully. Such a radical technology could upset the apple cart, attract unwanted attention, and destabilize an already fragile situation. It's a tough balancing act fostering innovation while safeguarding national interests. The world was watching Zimbabwe, waiting to see how it would handle this potential game-changer. Would they embrace the future or buckle under pressure? It was a lot of weight on one nation's shoulders. Section 5, The African Road Less Travelled, A Logistical Nightmare Right, let's not forget the sheer logistical nightmare of driving from Zimbabwe to Cairo. We're talking about a continent with its fair share of challenges, dodgy roads, unpredictable weather, and let's not even get started on the political borders and paperwork. This wasn't just a Sunday drive to the shops, this was an epic adventure fraught with potential pitfalls. Breakdowns, spare parts in the middle of nowhere, corrupt officials demanding bribes, the list goes on. Frankly, I'm surprised Chikumbutso even attempted it. It would have been a logistical nightmare even with a normal car, let alone one that supposedly runs on air. The home team advantage building a base in Zimbabwe. So with all the risks and potential pitfalls, it's no surprise that Chikumbutso decided to postpone the Cairo trip. It was a tough but pragmatic decision. Instead of gambling on a risky road trip, he chose to focus on building a solid foundation for his invention back home in Zimbabwe. This meant setting up production facilities, securing investment and, crucially, protecting his intellectual property. It's all well and good having a brilliant idea, but without the right support and protection, it's all too easy to get ripped off. By keeping the technology grounded in Zimbabwe, at least for now, Chikumbutso had a fighting chance of controlling the narrative, of ensuring that the benefits of his invention would be shared with his homeland. from prototype to production line, a giant leap for green energy. Postponing the Cairo trip wasn't about giving up, it was about scaling up. Chikumbutso's vision wasn't limited to one car driving across Africa, it was about mass production, about getting his invention into the hands of ordinary people. This required a shift in focus from publicity stunt to practical reality. It meant building factories, training workers, and navigating the complexities of supply chains and distribution networks. It was a massive undertaking, but it was the only way to truly disrupt the status quo, to bring about the paradigm shift in energy and transportation that Chikumbutso envisioned. The proof is in the driving, putting the world in the driver's seat. Now I'm a practical bloke. I like my cars fast, loud, and a bit rough around the edges. But even I can see that Chikumbutso's invention has the potential to be a real game-changer. But the real test of any new technology isn't in the lab or on some carefully orchestrated road trip. It's in the hands of everyday people being put through its paces in the real world. Once people can see it, touch it, drive it for themselves, that's when the real revolution begins. That's when the doubters and the naysayers will finally have to sit up and take notice. A revolution on hold, not abandoned, the road ahead. So the Cairo trip might be on hold for now, but that doesn't mean Chikumbutso's dream is dead, far from it. Picture this as a strategic move to focus more on what benefits everyone, especially African, who has been deprived of level playing field with the Western world into playing catch-up. In my best opinion, that's a smart money to let the stunt be made by real owners who successfully acquire this car. The recent interviews held in a secret facility, he made this crystal clear that his focus for the time being will be on Africa and not only that, 
he will be in collaboration with Chinese automotive industry as agreed to establish manufacturing plant in Zimbabwe to produce more sedan equipped with his microsonic energy device. If you are more interested in being faster than your keyboard ninjas on internet, you can purchase a retrofits for your gas-powered car from Scythe Group distributor in Zimbabwe, which previously said it will cost $10,000 for the every essential component it will take to successfully convert your gasoline-powered car into self-powered car. A typical DIY project. He's playing the long game, building a solid foundation for a future where cars don't need petrol stations. It's a bold vision and one that faces enormous challenges. Then finally, if you have faced difficulties caused by skeptics, big oil industries in the past trying to usher in your innovation, that you got to cross road in 2025 and presented with two opportunities. To build cars for ready customers for commercialization after acquisition of necessary certification to certify your products meet safety standards. Will you choose to produce your car and sell to available and awaiting customers? Or risk your life and resources performing public stunt to impress abusive and destructive skeptics and attract more haters? In this regards, if you have answered the above questions correctly, you will know who will perform the Cairo trip stunt time and date. It will change the world as we know it. And that's a drive worth taking, even if it takes a little longer than expected. So watch this space. Chikumbutso's story is just getting started. The next $1 million question is, does the self-powered technology needs the trip to Cairo show off or attract more foreign haters and disrespect in the name of investors? The answer is, no, where are the threats coming from all this while? Is from foreign investors. In reality, African continent have more than enough market and investors than Maxwell Chikumbutso can ever imagined. More than enough. If he can get the self-powered car to, to half African continent, it's game over. The Western abusive and destructive skeptics can kiss the dust and ride on with their Tesla, BYD, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Ford, while Africa ride on with their self-powered car. Time will tell. So there you have it, my distinguished guest, gentlemen and ladies, fans of self-powered car. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a flight to catch and a self-powered car to drive. <laughs>